Hi, I'm Brian Vitovich, the creative director and co-founder of EXP Restaurant and Bar. Making this video to tell you a couple things. First of all, wow. Thanks to all the people that have contributed to Indiegogo so far. We are absolutely amazed at the support that the local community has been giving us. So we just wanted to extend a big thank you and a high five for when we open our doors finally and hope to see you all there. We're at 28,000 out of the 50 that we need and we still have three weeks to go so that's awesome. We'll be holding a few pre-release parties for the people who contributed to the campaign as an added perk. So we hope you look forward to that in your email. We really can't thank you guys enough. Now for the meat of this video, the second thing we have to talk about today. The liquor control and licensing branch of British Columbia has effectively banned video games at EXP. Yeah. What? I'm gonna let that sink in for a minute. The liquor board has specifically prohibited the use of video game consoles in our venue. One of the first ever video game restaurants. They let us know in an email a few days ago and we needed to let all of our contributors and all of our fans know as soon as we had an action plan ready to go. Now you might ask, why would they do this? And that's a good question. To understand that, you'll need to understand the liquor law and policy here in British Columbia. Well, we only have two types of licenses here in British Columbia. A food primary and a liquor primary. Roughly, this translates into a family restaurant versus a nightclub. There's no such thing as a pub license or anything in between. It's just the two extremes. The fruit primary takes a few months and nominal fees, while the liquor primary, which does actually allow a lot more entertainment and a lot more freedom in terms of liquor sales and generally doing anything at all, takes 18 months minimum and an additional $15,000. Not to mention the rent you'd have to be paying for 18 months on top of all of that. EXP is not a nightclub, so we decided to go for the food primary and we did our research. The problem that we already knew about was that the food primaries do have restricted entertainment policy, and we basically found that if people were sitting down instead of standing up to play video games, we'd be okay. They even have a section in there that talks about how board games and other things can be played at the table, and there shouldn't be a problem. The problem that we have is there's this little clause attached to the section about board games being allowed in the space, but really they don't have anything written really about games at all yet. So the little line that we have to deal with is, so long as it doesn't detract from the service of food. That's kind of where the issue is right now, is that they feel that having video games in there would detract from the service of food. So we argued that you know, what's the difference between sitting down and watching a hockey game? If you're there for three hours, and that's really why you're at the restaurant, then what's that any different than if you're coming to play a few games with your meal? They didn't really give us a solid answer on that, and they just instead uh, decided to send us a nice letter that said they are outright prohibited. In order to obtain our license and keep the process moving forward so we can actually open on time, we agreed not to have game consoles provided by us in EXP. At the time, we had a nice way around all that because we could just hire a third party to bring in the consoles and then take them out at the end of the night. And of course, anyone could bring in their own console and plug them up to the TVs and there wouldn't be an issue. We would still achieve our vision with EXP, even though it would be a little harder on us to do it every day, we could still get what we wanted from the outset. That's cool, we thought, you know, crisis averted and all that. Right? Wrong. On the letter we received showing we were approved for the inspection phase of the licensing, we had an extra term added to our license that no one else in the country has. The use of gaming consoles is prohibited within the redlined areas. Our entire space is the redlined area. So we've just been singled out as the only place in all of British Columbia or Canada or even North America that couldn't have someone bring in their gaming console or someone else provide gaming consoles um, or even us provide gaming consoles as, so long as we didn't ask. I can go into any other venue in Vancouver with my Xbox, PlayStation, or Wii and not have a single issue if I hook it up to one of their TVs and enjoy it. I could be eating, I could be drinking, I could be just drinking, I could be doing anything I wanted. And that brings another question, what is a gaming console? Do they count PCs? Do they count laptops? Do they count tablets or your iPhone? I mean, what what constitutes that gaming portion? And will I be shut down, you know, with fines or, you know, liquor license revoked for two weeks or more or even revoked entirely because someone is playing on their iPad in my space? I think the main problem here is that they have to catch up to the digital age and they just haven't done that yet. What we need is a revision of these liquor policies entirely. But for now, we are going to have to settle for 
is trying to get this provision removed from EXP, which was unfairly put upon us. Clearly, this isn't an issue of public safety. This is an issue of not taking the time to understand gaming and what it's all about. There are plenty of other places all around the world that have video games and alcohol in close proximity. And yep, I just checked, and yes, the world is still functioning as normal. So really, in the issue of public safety, this has no bearing because I can still do it in a liquor primary space. A space that, for whatever reason, is supposedly more dangerous, but instead we are just a restaurant and we are not allowed to have things such as the horrors of video games available to our customers. Yeah, I know. It's fucking ridiculous. This kind of bullying uh, and policy mongering is really just unacceptable. You know, I don't like being bullied. Uh, I don't know anyone who does. So we're gonna change this. And we need your help to do it. We've come too far and worked too hard to make this place a reality, and we're not about to roll over and just let this happen. If we don't get this policy changed in time for opening our doors, we will still be the best place for watching gaming tournaments and events, listening to video game inspired music or game remixes, drinking some gamer themed drinks, gamer themed food that's just going to be absolutely delicious, and of course preparing for the gaming awesomeness that is to come. We will still be a hub for the gaming community, and we will do everything we can to show that gaming is a powerful part of our culture. We need your help now more than ever to change this policy. The good news is they're working with the same consultants that helped the Rio Theater. If you don't know what happened with the Rio, they are an indie theater that was also affected by the LCLB's decisions. And hey, the best part is they won their battle. The link will be in the description below for you. As for us, on top of contacting these consultants, we're going to be talking to our local MLAs, the VPD, and our own uh, assigned liquor inspector to see if we can get them on our side and show them that this policy doesn't really need to exist and that we can make a change together. We're asking for their support to make a strong case to the liquor board that this needs to be changed. So in regards to Indiegogo, anything that we have over $50,000 will go directly towards fighting this fight. And that means changing it so we can have playable games at EXP every day of the week, all year round. And then eventually we're going to change it so that the liquor licensing process changes in its entirety. What we need now is a support network to really make this change. And together I believe we can do that as a community here at EXP. We aren't going to have games day one, but we will be fighting them tooth and nail to get them put back in. Please, sign our petition, share our petition, tell everyone you know. Get us out to major news outlets, get us out to every blog you can think of. This is important. You have the opportunity to make a real change here in Vancouver and all of British Columbia. This would be the first precedent they wouldn't be able to go back after this. So this is a big deal, and we have the power to make that happen. We need your support and your signatures and your emails to make sure that the true vision of EXP is realized. Please don't send the liquor board any angry emails. That's not going to help our cause. It's actually going to make it worse for us in the end. Please contact your MLAs and bring their attention to this video. Contact any person that you might think of and really try and get them to see this video and understand what we're fighting for. Local game companies, tech companies, restaurateurs, or other license holders, please contact us if you believe in what we're trying to do. I fully believe that we can get the signatures and the support we need to really make an effective change. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest developments and updates, and hopefully with your help we'll be able to knock down this wall soon enough. And just as Randy Posh said, the walls are only there to stop the people who don't want it badly enough. I don't know if the liquor board's heard of a falcon punch, but it's coming their way. If you have any questions or comments, please throw them down in the video below or on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, we'll be able to answer them as soon as we possibly can and help you out. All the important and relevant information we put down in the description below. Huge thanks again to watching this video and supporting EXP thus far. A massive thank you if you've contributed to our campaign and shared it with your friends. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get this done as soon as we possibly can and open with the bang we want in the middle of July. Thanks very much guys. See you soon.